2023. 2023. Who ever thought we'd live this long? I can remember... I can remember being at a series of meetings, because I'm a preacher's kid, right? So I had to go to all those meetings. I can be at a, a series of meetings in 1969. It was right at the end of 1969. And I don't know why that sticks out in my memory, but it does. And I remember thinking, sitting there in the pew thinking, man, it's going to be so strange. Instead of saying 1969, which just flows out of your mouth, to say 1970. That just didn't fit right at all. 1980 came. You remember the year 2000? All the paranoia that went with the year 2000? Remember 2012 because the world was supposed to end in 2012 according to the Mayan calendar? And now here we are in 2023. It doesn't seem right, does it? You know, my dad is fond of reminding me that in my few years on this earth, I have seen more changes in my lifetime than all the generations before us, before you and me. Think about it. Since we have been here on this earth, we've seen people go to the moon. We've seen robots go to Mars. We have seen flight go from barely able to stay in the air to having two wings, to having one wing, to having propellers, to having jets, to having rockets, and flying multiple times the speed of sound. Think of all the changes we've seen. This time of year is usually the time of year when people stop and consider all the changes they have seen. They think about all the things that they did do last year and all the things they want to do this year that are different than last year because it's a new year. It's a new opportunity. We're going to do things different than we did before. So how many of you made resolutions three weeks ago? How many of you have not broken any of those resolutions from three weeks. How well did you do? Most of the time, this is a fun time of year for people. Uh, It goes from November Thanksgiving through Valentine's in February. This time, this time framework is the fun time of year for people. They like to think about giving gifts to people. They like to call people on the phone and say, we love you. It's also traditionally a time for reflection. That's the time when people say, hmm, how did I do? Did I do what I knew I was supposed to do? Or did I fail somewhere along the way? And did I give up? Did I quit worrying about it in March of last year and, oh, well, whatever happens is going to happen? Or did you have your plan stay in place that long? Sometimes we forget what this whole block of time is supposed to be about. Let me back up to, to Christmas, okay? Christmas, Santa. Santa traditionally is the good old boy. He's loved by everybody. The big red nose, the red suit, the fat man drives around, drives around, flies around, rides in a sleigh, gives toys to everybody, right? Everybody loves Santa. Except Washington, D.C., 2013. Santa was standing on a street corner giving out toys to underprivileged kids And one of the kids evidently didn't like what he got because he pulled out a pellet gun and shot Santa. 2011 in Texas, a man dressed up as Santa crashed a party and killed six people as Santa. Somebody else thought that was a good idea. So 2014, another man dressed as Santa pulled into a party down South California, Covina, and killed eight people. We're messed up. 
We're messed up when we make our resolutions. We're messed up in everyday life. We're messed up when we think about God and what he wants us to do. You know, this is a very interesting book. This book, if you haven't read it, this book is a very strange book because there's some weird stories in here. There's some stories in here that have put your hair standing straight up on end. And there's stories on here, in here, that uh, make you wonder what in the world you're doing today. And there is education in here. There's education in here to tell you what you should be doing this year, right now, in 2023. So if people get messed up, like the Santas, like just pay attention to the news every day and you can see how messed up people are, you can see that people have issues. They get depressed. They get discombobulated. And just like today, people in the Bible got depressed. They got discombobulated. So the Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the people in Ephesus. Now, you don't have to look this one up. I'm going to abbreviate it, but I'll tell you where it's at. You can look it up later. Ephesians 2, 8, and 10. Paul, the people in Ephesus were depressed. Things were not going the way they wanted them to go. They were supposed to be um, recruit, not recruiting. They were supposed to be working on telling people about the love of Jesus and letting Jesus save them, to give them a whole new life, Right? But they were not getting anywhere. People weren't responsive to the message. People were doing their own thing. They didn't care. And so Paul had to write them and remind them that we are saved by grace, not by ourselves. Don't go out and boast about your works because they're not worth it. We are God's workmanship not our workmanship, and we were made to be good. So in other words, don't worry about other people. Do what you can do, but stay firm, stay convinced, stay positive. You are God's. You were made to be good. In another letter, Paul encouraged the Corinthians in Colossians, I'm sorry, the Colossians in Colossians 1, 21 and 22. And you were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind, by the wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled the body of his flesh through the death to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable in his sight. So when you go home and you heave a heavy sigh, what's the use? I don't have money to help the things that need money in church. I don't have the right words to tell my neighbors I just, I can't do it. Don't feel bad. Because God says you are holy and blameless and irreproachable in his sight. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. And the first part of that is the key. Because see, the people were reflecting just like we reflect in this time of year. They knew that they had messed up. They knew they weren't making progress. They knew that they, were, they had a job that they were supposed to be doing, and it, they weren't getting results. And so the Apostle Paul had to remind them, it's okay. Not everything happens right this instant. But you are holy and saved and unrepressible in his sight. So the scripture today starts off talking about what we should be doing. Romans 6, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him. And knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives unto God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, don't let sin reign in your mortal body 
that you should obey it and its lusts. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of the righteousness of God. Oh, what did he just say? Alive, dead, dead, alive. Okay, you ready? We're going to unpack that. Traditionally, we humans like to look at our successes and our failures and our plans to make the framework for what we're going to do tomorrow. We look at what happened last year to make resolutions for this year. So if you made some resolutions for 2023, Paul has some advice for that. Colossians 3, 1 to 3. He says, seek the things above. Put your affections, which is your mind and your heart, to hide in Christ. Trouble is, we make the resolutions. We decide what we are going to do. And then what happens? We fail, right? So if we are going to fail, what are we going to do? So there's this little old lady, lived a little over 100 years ago. And she wrote a book, The Testimonies to the Church. And in the third copy of The Testimonies, she says, You don't know the will of God. And neither can you know it while you live for yourself. You rely on your own good intentions and resolutions. And the principal sum of life is composed of resolutions made and broken. What you need to do is to die to self, cease clinging to self, and surrender to God. Die to self, surrender to God. Sounds easy, right? Romans confirms that. Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect for the will of God. Sounds easy, right? Just die to self and surrender to God. But is it that easy? 2 Corinthians says, any man in Christ is a new creature, and the old things are passed away, and all things are new. That's a good thing. So let's pretend. We're, we're in the new year. We're in 2023. We're just three weeks in. This is where all the resolutions get made. This is where people say, I'm going to do, I'm going to be, I'm going to make, I'm going to sell, I'm, I'm going to. So three weeks in, are you still going to church every day or every week? Are you still tithing? We had that conversation this morning. Are you still participating? When somebody says, hey, I need you to, to do the congregational singing in, on Sabbath, are you still helping? So if you're not, then what happens? Are we done for? Are we finished? I mean, after all, it's not such a big thing. It's just a little deal once a week, once a day, once a whatever, right? Does it matter that much? Second, or first Samuel. Go back in the Old Testament. First, second, first Samuel 12, 20, and 22. The children of Israel were living with prophets, and Samuel was their main prophet. He was speaking for God, right? Remember that? And the people of Israel said, we look strange to everybody else. We want to be like everybody else. We want to have a king. And Samuel said, well, you have a king. That's God. He's, he is your intermediary. He's working for you. And they said, no, 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 you don't understand. We need somebody to go out in front of the, the enemy, um, in front of our army for the enemy to be our representative. We need the figurehead. We need to look like the other nations around us. We need a king to do that. Was that a problem, having a king? No, not really. 
accept that that's not what God had intended. And it's a little thing, but it just showed that people distrusted God. Instead of waiting for him to work in his time and watching him, they looked at the nations around them and decided they didn't want to be different. They didn't want to stand out. They wanted to look like everybody else, so they wanted a king. So if you start analyzing that and think about that, what actually happened is that that is exactly what happens to us. It typifies our experience. They really didn't want God to do his will. They wanted him to do their will. His will was a little more inconvenient. His will made them look funny in other people's eyes. And so when Samuel chastised them for not really surrendering and reminding them that they were the same as their forefathers in Egypt, they were afraid. They were afraid they had screwed up so bad they were goners. They, we might as well just go the way of the world because we've already blown it. And then Samuel says something. 1 Samuel 12, 20, and 22. He says, do not fear. You have done all this wickedness. Yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. For the Lord will not forsake his people. For his name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. They went directly against what God had planned for them, and he still said, don't give up. You are mine. Bought and paid for. He doesn't ever leave us because we're his. So, okay, fine. All right, fine. We know. We're supposed to be like Christ, right? What happens if we do? That's easy. The little book, Christ Object Lessons. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. Simple as that. Now, the Bible has lots of counsel. It's got lots of instructions. Matter of fact, Paul says this whole book was just written as an example for us to follow. So what happens if we do what we're supposed to do. It's good, this advice in, the, in, this, in this book is good for everyone. It's good for old people, young people, husbands, wives, children, young people, rich people, poor people, doesn't matter. Real simple, Colossians. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. What is affections? Affections is desires of your heart or mind. Okay, That's, that, I could do that, yeah. And then Matthew 6, lay not your treasures on this earth, but in heaven. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be. Okay, got that. That's not too hard. How do we lay up these treasures, though? How do we become this Christ-like that we're supposed to be? Well, once again, the Bible gives us very specific things that we should be doing. We are told to put off these things in Colossians 3. Put off fornication, uncleanliness, unnatural desires, lust, covetousness, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication, and lies. Makes perfect sense, right? None of us want to have those things in our life. But let's just say for a second that your life is a box. And in this box, you have one or more of these problems. Well, I'm going to call them a problem. One of these undesirable traits. Okay, that sounds a little less harsh. If you take that out of the box, now what? You've got an empty box. You need something to fill it, right? So Paul does the perfect example here. He doesn't just say, stop smoking. 
He says, okay, I'm going to tell you to stop smoking, but instead of smoking, do this to take the place of, which is the perfect way to do anything. You don't just say stop doing because now what's the person going to do, right? You're going to have something to fill it with. And so he says, put off these things and now put on these things. Colossians 3, 12 to 17. Hearts of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, self-control, forgiveness, charity, peace, thankfulness. Ah, okay, I like those. Those are great ideas for a new year for 2023. But what about those old resolutions? Aren't they similar to what we were going to do last year? And didn't we fail then, even though we wanted to be merciful and kind and humble and meek and long-suffering, have self-control, forgiveness, charity, peace, thankfulness? Is this year going to be the same song, 32nd verse? Are we going to be like the salesman who never got a promotion? So he went to his boss and he said, boss, I want a promotion. I've got 17 years experience in this job. And the boss said, no, I'm sorry, you don't. You have one year's experience 17 times. And there's a difference. Is that our religious experience? Are we trying to do better this year? How are we going to do better? Are we just the old man with new resolutions? We're not supposed to be the old man. We're supposed to be the new man. Why is that important? Look at Matthew 9. Matthew 9, 17. It's really simple. People don't put new wine into old wineskins, else the wineskins break. The wine is spilled, the wineskins are ruined. They put the new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Well, that makes perfect sense. You don't try and put 100 pounds of potatoes in an old potato sack, because the potato sack's going to rip, and the potatoes will end up everywhere. You're going to put 100 pounds of potatoes in a new sack because the stitches are new and they will last a whole lot longer. So what does that mean? That means that we're not going to lie to each other because we have put off the old man, the old nature, and we've put on the new man. We have decided to surrender to Christ. So how do we get rid of that old man that has made us fail all these years in a row? Steps to Christ says, you cannot change your heart. You cannot of yourself give to God its affections. But you can choose to serve him. You can give him your will And then he will work in you to do according to his goodwill and pleasure. You can't do it yourself. If you made resolutions the end of December, the first week of January, you will fail. Nothing is going to be different from this year to next year to the next year to the next year. But you can choose to stand beside Jesus Christ every single day. And if you just choose every morning when you get out of bed to say, God, today I am yours. He will then work in you to do what he wants you to do. So, rather than saying, I will... I choose, I'm going to do, now just say, I choose you, and let God work 
through you. The airport terminal was crowded. It was my annual flight. Often as I had made it, the thrill and the adventure and the experience created an expectancy. It was there. In spite of the half bored anxiety as to how it would come out, I always felt a little afraid. What did this flight hold for me? With mixed emotions, I waited for my luggage to be weighed. Oh, your bags are very much overweight, the extremely courteous voice was apologetic, almost as if he felt sorry for me. Oh, that's all right, I smiled at him. I'm used to overweight. I'll pay the extra charges. I'm sorry, he added. This time you cannot pay. The flight is crowded. You have to reduce your luggage. Your attention, please. Flight 2023 is now loading. Well, that's impossible. It contains only the things which I always travel. It'll have to be done, he said, and shoved my bags toward me. The stewardess will help you. Already my bags were being opened and the hand was rummaging through them. Ooh, this is quite heavy, the stewardess said, taking out a big bundle. These old traditions have outlived their usefulness. We're going to just throw them away. And into a large receptacle marked useless went my cherished traditions of other days, which through the years I had carefully hoarded. Flight 2023. Whatever can this be, the stewardess was now drawing out a big package from the very bottom of the bag. I do declare, she said as she untied the bows of ribbons that I had tried to make attractive. It's full of put-offs. Put-offs? I was quite puzzled. Yes, put-offs. All the things you meant to do. The letters to write, the friends to call, the cheery word to speak, the appreciation to show, flowers to give, thoughtfulness, attention to bestow. And my, my, how did you accumulate so much? Without waiting for my answer, she tossed the whole package, ribbon and all, into a basket marked too late and picked up another bundle. This rattles, she said. Must be chips for your shoulder. It sounds like you've been collecting them for a long time. And without a blink, she tossed them into the open fire and up into smoke went my whole bundle of pet grievances. Flight 2023, now boarding on Concourse 20. Ooh, this is heavy. The stewardess now was holding a brightly colored bottle filled with a dark, heavy liquid. That, I said with dignity, is my precious bottle of pride. It perfumes my personality. I'll keep it, please. And I held out my hand. No, the voice was stern. This odor is obnoxious. I'm going to break it. And the bottle crashed to the floor. And through my tears, I saw its contents ooze away. Flight 2023, come, the voice was kind again. Your flight's almost ready. I'll take you to, I'll help you to repack. Here where you had indecisions will tuck in opportunity. It doesn't weigh anything and fresh supplies are always at hand. New fresh supplies are always ready for you. New ideas are so wonderful with which to experiment, and in place of the put-offs you had at the bottom of your bag, we're going to pack in a whole tray of kindness, but put them on top for convenience. And we're not going to bother with fancy bows or excuses, they just add to the weight. In place of the shoulder chips, which must have been very hard and uncomfortable to wear, we're going to put in pads of love and understanding. They give perfect contour to your shoulders, Garments worn over them have a beauty that can never be surpassed. Flight 2023, now loading. I snapped my bag shut. I'm sorry about the bottle of pride, the stewardess said. It was quite necessary to break it. In its place, I'm going to give you this golden flagon of humility. Let its mist surround you, and you will walk in an aura of loveliness. Flight 2023, all passengers on board. The plane lifted, and I was away on my flight of 365 days. 
Old inhibitions dropped away as the ground receded and I settled into my seat and smiled at fellow passengers. It was gonna be a good flight, this flight of 2023. I was going into the new year with no excess baggage. Have you checked your baggage? <laughs>